Hey Ross Draper students, hope you're doing well and still I miss you. Unfortunately we can't gather uh, together physically this week which means we have another video uh, for you this week. As we wrap up our series on Heal the Wound, I wanted to return back to the story of Pinocchio just for a few moments. If you remember a few weeks ago, uh, I talked a little bit about the, uh, uh, Pinocchio and the fox and the cat and how in that interaction, Pinocchio came to think that he could play the victim. And by being able to play the victim, instead of taking responsibility for what he could take of on, the, on his end, he decided to uh, do things that led his life on a downward spiral. Well, as Pinocchio plays a role, I think his father, Geppetto, also plays a role. And that role is the role of a loving father. Geppetto, in his role, has the job of forgiving Pinocchio for his wandering and destructive behaviors. And in that role, Geppetto inspires Pinocchio to be the best version of himself. I like the story of Pinocchio and Geppetto because it shows us what it means uh, for God as our Father. God as our Father wants you and me to be the best versions of ourselves, which comes when we, in the language of Paul, are conformed to the image of our big brother Jesus. In order to do that, though, we must heal from our wounds, which leads us to our final step in our series, Heal the Wound. And that final step is that we must forgive those who have wounded us. God's Word shares a lot on forgiveness, and particularly it always focuses on God forgiving us for our wrongdoings. But fascinatingly, Jesus shares with his disciples the attitude that a, a Christian should have when forgiving someone else. Jesus had been sharing uh, with his disciples in Matthew 18 the importance of forgiving one another. And out of this teaching, uh, Peter asks Jesus this question. He asks Jesus this question in Matthew 8, 18, verses 21. He says, uh, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? And I think, I think Peter's question is genuine. Like, how, how often should I forgive someone who's hurt me? And if you know a little bit about the Hebrew context, Jewish uh, religious leaders said that you can forgive someone three times for the same sin, and after that, you no longer have to forgive them. And so Peter, I think, was uh, being a little generous with saying seven times. He's sort of saying, you know, the Hebrews and the Jewish people and the rabbis and these false teachers that you talk about say that uh, you should forgive someone three times, but we, maybe we should only forgive seven times. And like always, Jesus' response is a response that Peter did not expect. The response that Jesus says is, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. The point that Jesus makes is that there should be no limit to how much we should forgive someone. There should be no limit as a follower of Jesus how much we should forgive someone because we have been forgiven of so much. So here's why that's important for us today. If you put a limit on forgiveness, you put a limit on the amount of freedom you have from a wound. Having a limitless amount of forgiveness begins with the truth that God has lavished out all his grace upon you through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Not only that, but if you are unforgiving, you are more prone to the following. You bring anger and bitterness to all of your relationships. You are more prone of being unable to enjoy the present. You also have a higher risk of depression and anxiety. And you also have a feeling at odds in spiritual life, ever and always wondering if life has a meaning. Last week, I shared that there is a battle for your heart and joy. The ba that battle is won when you forgive, not when you fight harder and you sort of toughen up and say, I don't need to forgive them, I'm just going to move on from it, but it comes when you forgive that person. It's not denying what happened, it's saying that you are willingly choosing out, an act, out of an act of your will, you are choosing to live in freedom, and that freedom comes with forgiveness. The Christian author Neil Anderson said this once. He said, don't wait to forgive until you feel like forgiving. You will never get there. 
Feelings take time to heal after the choice to forgive is made. You have to choose to forgive, even when you don't feel like it, or else you run the risk of letting Satan and bitterness gain a foothold in you. So real quickly, what are some things that you can begin to do to experience this freedom that comes when you forgive someone from a past wound? The first thing you can do is this. Identify what needs forgiven and who needs forgiven for what. Before you can forgive anything or anyone, you must identify what it is, what it is exactly that needs forgiven. Maybe it's a friend who uh, betrayed you or a parent that left you. Maybe it's a sibling who mistreated you when you were younger. Or maybe it was a bully in school that's caused you to have low self-esteem. Whatever it is, you need to identify what it is before you can forgive it and also who that person is that you must forgive. The second thing you can do is move away from the role of a victim and release the control and power the wound has over you. Pinocchio was told that it was all right for him to play the, the role of a victim and it led his life in a downward spiral to the point where he was stuck in the belly of a whale. For Christians, we are not supposed to to live as victims, but we are supposed to live as conquerors because we are more than conquerors in Christ. What that means is nothing can separate you and me from the love of God. Not our pa past wounds, not the present wounds we experience, and not the future wounds that we will experience. Realize that if you are a Christian and you're listening to this video, you are called to live as a conqueror over the past wounds that you have experienced. And God has given us that victory through Jesus. And we are now able to see and use those wounds that we've experienced as an opportunity to share the hope that is in Jesus. I share a lot about the father wound that I had with my biological father leaving before I was born and never getting to meet him. And now I can share because of what Jesus has done for me and after I've forgiven my biological father for what he's done, I can teach people what it means to have God as your father. And I can teach people the experience that I went through and the hope that there is in Jesus. And the last thing that I have is choose to forgive the person who's offended you. Choose the person, choose, choose to forgive the person who's offended you. There will never be an easy time to forgive someone, but you can choose to hold on to the resentment or you can choose to forgive. It's easier to hold on to hard feelings, but God calls us to forgive those who have hurt us. Choosing to forgive someone is a sign that you have trusted in God for the healing of your soul and heart. And it's a declaration that the past wound doesn't have any power over you. So you have to choose today. Will you choose to forgive someone for what they've done to you? Or will you choose to just continue to sit in your bitterness and your anger and allow Satan to gain a foothold in your heart? As we finish the series on Heal the Wound, it's been my prayer that we would receive freedom from these past wounds that we've experienced. And we receive that, experience, we receive that freedom by trusting in God to heal us as we forgive those who have hurt us. I believe God redeems our past. And I am standing proof of the grace of God that was lavished out upon a hurting boy. He loved me with an unfailing love, and I believe that he loves you with that same unfailing love. So whatever past wound you've experienced or present wound you are currently experiencing, I pray that you surrender it to God, that you should grieve as you should, that you let God love you, and that you begin to forgive the person who has wounded you. In that forgiveness, you find true freedom, because you are trusting in the one who is more than capable of lavishing out freedom from bondage. My prayer is that we would begin to be a people who forgive people who have hurt us. Because as Paul says in Colossians 3.13, we have been forgiven through the work of Christ on the cross. So I'm praying for you. I'm praying for all of you through this time. 
um, that you would begin to allow God to heal you from your past wounds. Grace and peace.